31, I want to start section 3.5 a little differently. I'm going to start it on my computer today. So we're going to transform functions. We're going to graph functions using compressions and stretches. We're going to graph functions using reflections about the x and y axis. We're going to graph functions with vertical and horizontal shifts, so vertical up, down, horizontal left, right. And then the last thing that we're going to talk about, our last learning outcome, is determining whether a function is something we call even, odd, or neither. But that's the last example in this section. And the reason I wanted to start on my computer is because I think it's helpful to see these graphs on your graphing calculator and use your table function that's built into your graphing calculator to assist you with actually getting those graphs onto your paper. So we want to graph these functions on the same axes, and then I want us to think about what's the difference between these functions. Because if you look at f of x, g of x, and h of x, they all have absolute value, uh, the absolute value function in them. Right? This is your basic absolute value function. It's one of your toolkit functions. This is twice the absolute value of x, and this is a third of the absolute value of x. And I'm guessing that you've seen some kind of transformations before. Maybe you remember what happens to the functions when the coefficient in front of that term changes, right? Because the secret coefficient here is a 1, then we had a 2, then a 1 third. So let's see what happens to the absolute value function as we change the coefficient in front of it. Um, and we're going to graph those. So let's go to our y equals. Oh, it looks like I have a cubic in here. Let me clear this out. This is probably from our last example. And then the absolute fun value function is built into your calculator. You just need to know where to look for it. So we're going to hit our math button. And we're going to head to the right so we can activate our num menu. So I'm going to hit my right arrow key. And you see this num menu showing up. And the first option in there is ABS. And that stands for absolute value. So you can either hit the enter key or you can just hit one. And I just want to graph the absolute value of x for right now. Now I have no idea what my window was. If I remember correctly, we adjusted it for that cubic because I think we were looking for maxes and mins. Just to have a peek, yeah, my window is adjusted, right? And that's why I always recommend that you hit zoom six when you have a new math problem, just so you can reset it. All right, so there's our V, right? That's your basic absolute value function. And now I'm going to graph G of X. That's double the absolute value function. So let me go back to my Y equals. And now I want to activate Y2. So I'll do 2 times the absolute value of X. So 2 and then math over to num, absolute value, X. Close that parentheses. Now if I hit zoom 6 again, there was my original absolute value of x, and you can kind of see that skinnier or that steeper looking doubled absolute value of x, right? These are doubled y values. All right, let's now graph one third of the absolute value of x. And as we start to go through these problems, see if you can get ahead of the graph. Like, where do you think the graph's going to go? Are we, and we're stretching, right? We're stretching and shrinking. Do we think that our basic absolute value function, when we doubled it, went like this? What do you think is going to happen to it when we only take a third of those absolute values? So let's go ahead and go down to y3. All right, and I want one third times the absolute value of x. All right, now I don't need to hit zoom six. I can, but I haven't adjusted my window, so I can just hit graph. And you see that one third absolute value of x come in. Now, another function of your calculator is this table function up here. And it can be very useful when you're trying to graph functions for me and you're not quite sure what they look like. So if we hit second and we hit graph, because we've hit the second key, it'll activate your table. And you can see that in Y1, here was the absolute value function, right? The absolute value of negative 1 is 1. The absolute value of 0 is 0, so on and so forth. And in Y2, you see all the doubled absolute values, right? The absolute value of negative 1 is 1, but double that is 2, and that was our g of x function. All right, now if I hit the right arrow key, I can go over to y sub 3, and you can see when x was negative 1, the absolute value was 1 third. So you can see all of these tables, and it, they can assist you in your graphing. These are all ordered pairs that are going to show up on our graph. So I'm going to hop back to my written um, lecture notes and we're going to graph these and then talk about 
what's been happening as we adjusted this coefficient that was out in front of this absolute value symbol. So I'll see you in a little bit. Bye. Hey Math 31, we're back. So I'm gonna take everything from my calculator and put it onto this uh, Cartesian coordinate system. But of course I wanna label and scale my axes. So I'm gonna label them X and Y. And I'm gonna make each square worth one unit. So I'll put the 10, 10 there. Now I'm gonna use my calculator screen as a reference. So as you saw on the um, computer, I plugged all of these in. I hit zoom six. They start popping out. And then if I need assistance, which it's great if you do, I can use my table function and see that, okay, I have some absolute value of x, some double the absolute value of x, and if I go a little bit more over, it's gonna be one third of the absolute value of x. Now, this table looks a little bit different from the one you saw on my computer because I have my table set to calculate y values every half a unit. If I want to change that, I will go second in window and set my table to say, hey, can you calculate y values just every one unit? And let me just start at zero. So I'll start my table at zero and go one unit each time I calculate a y value. If I go back into my table now, it looks a little bit nicer. I'm actually gonna scroll up just to see a few values. So we've got, yeah, let me go ahead and draw in the absolute value of x. That one I know is just a v, it starts at zero, zero. It'll go up to 11, 11 and negative 11, 11. So let me draw that one in. All right, so this one here would be f of x because it is just the absolute value of x. Yeah, the absolute value of x. Let's draw g of x. Now that one is double, so instead of going 3, 2, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. I'm going to go 6, 4, 2, 0, 2, 4, 6. You can see the symmetry on either side of the y-axis. So we'll go 0. I'm going to go 2 here, 4 here, 6 here, and then it would be 8, 10. And then I'll have symmetry on this side. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So let me draw that v in. Okay, that one is g of x. So I do want you to take note, and it's, it's displayed in the, the table here, that the y values doubled, right? I was twice as high here on g of x than I was at f of x. And you can see that the absolute value function, right, it got skinnier because the y values got higher, right? In order to get to a y value of two here, I needed to be at an x value of two when we were just talking about the absolute value of x, but I only needed to be at an x value of one here to get up to two, right? My y values are twice as high, so it moves me up faster. Now, over here for h of x, that's over in my y3, I'm gonna go ahead and pinpoint the, the nicer number, so it looks like negative three, one, zero, zero, and three, one, so let's try that. We had negative three, one, zero, zero, and three, one, and I have a feeling multiples of three will give me nice numbers, so let me go here and see. We've got um, six, two, so six, two, and that would mean we would have nine, three, and then through symmetry, I'm gonna have the same thing. I'm gonna have negative six, two, and then negative nine, three, and you can see that that one-third, because it was a fraction, it really, chopped down how fast this function was growing. It's only growing at a third of the rate of f of x. Okay, so this one is h of x. All right, so we've got our three functions graphed. We've used our calculator. We've used the table function in our graphing calculator, and I just want you to see how these coefficients affected the shape of your graph, right? This guy, when we did to double 
absolute value of x, our v got skinnier, right? But when we did a third, it got, I would say, wider, all right? You could say fatter and skinnier or narrower and wider, but those are pretty much the adjectives we use. All right, so I wanna scooch up here so that we can see this box. All right, and let's talk about what, we're, what our takeaways are. So vertical stretches and compression. So given a function f of x, a new function, g, defined as a multiple of f of x, where a is some constant, is a vertical stretch or a vertical compression of the function f of x. Now, if a is greater than one, then the graph will be stretched. And we saw that. When we doubled our y values, oops, let me scooch this back down. Right? When we doubled our y values, when we were taking a look, oops, let's get that all in view. All right, when we doubled our y values here, we saw that this got stretched vertically, right? It got stretched up. All right. On the flip of that, if you have a fraction, all right, if A is between zero and one, then the graph will be compressed, all right? If A is less than zero, if it's negative, there's gonna be a combination of a vertical stretch or a compression with a vertical reflection. And we'll talk about reflections a little bit later on down the line. So when I say, um, if a is greater than one versus a is between zero and one, we're talking about a number larger than one versus a fraction. So when we did double absolute value of x, we were having a vertical stretch. When we had one third the absolute value of x, we were being compressed, all right? We were kind of being pushed down. All right, so with that, we're gonna look at a different multiplier in example two. We're gonna look at what happens when you multiply a constant not on the outside of the grouping symbol, but inside the grouping symbol. So what if it's inside the parentheses? What if it wasn't a times f of x, but what if it was f of ax, or we'll eventually call it bx. All right, so that's what we got here. Let's move on to the next example and see how that transformation affects our graph. I'll see you in a few, bye.